I'm Eddie Bromley. This is the book of Isaiah in five minutes, part four. So in this section, we're going to look at chapters 40 through 66. In chapters 40 through 66, we explore the hope of God. The time of the exile is over and God announces that judgment has passed and he invites the people to go back home to the promised land where there they can become the servants of God through whom God will restore the world. That's the hope of the first part of this second section of Isaiah. But what happens instead is that the people are bitter and are filled with doubt and they accuse God of not caring about them and perhaps not even being able to keep his promises to them. In chapters 41 through 47, God responds to the accusations of his people. And it's set almost like a trial where God answers the questions having been put on the dock by the people. And he says to them that the exile was not a failure of divine power, but was an act of God's judgment. But that even through judgment, God loves his people and promises to do redemptive work through them. He tells them that he raised the Persian Empire to defeat the Babylonians so that the people could go home to the promised land and become the servants of God by, and the instrument by which God would restore the world. He wants them to see him as the author and the sovereign over all of history. And he invites them not only to look back and believe that he kept his promises, but to look forward and trust what God promises to do with them and through them in the future. In chapter 48, we get a disappointing discovery. The people are just as stubborn and unbelieving as their ancestors, and they refuse to be God's servant through whom God will renew the world. Yet the God of Israel is still committed to using his people as an instrument through which to redeem the world. So God is going to have to do something new in order to keep his intentions and in order to keep his promises to Abraham. In chapters 49 through 55, God raises up an individual that he calls the servant. He's also given the title Israel, and he is going to be willing and able to do what Israel was unwilling and unable to do. And he's going to do it for them. He's going to redeem them and restore them and restore God's plan so that the people can come back to God and so that the people can be God's instrument, a light to the nations by which the nations will come to know God. But we're surprised to discover how the servant is going to bring about this redemptive work. He is going to die for his people. He's going to suffer for them. And he's going to take the punishment of their sins upon himself. And so he dies, alone and disgraced. But then suddenly, he's alive. And he's drawing the people back to himself. And those who respond in humble obedience are called his servants. Those who reject him are called the wicked, and they are those who have refused to be a part of what God is doing. In chapters 56 through 66, the servants of the servant inherit the earth and become the instrument by which all of creation is renewed. In chapter 60 through 62, the servant is anointed by the Spirit of God to announce the kingdom of God and to announce that God is about to make all things new. In chapters 59 and in 63 and 64, the people of God grieve about their past sins, asking God to forgive them and to bring about his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. In chapters 56 through 58, the wicked refuse to repent and be a part of what God is doing. And so God permanently removes those from his good world who are intent on ruining it, distorting it, polluting it. He removes them permanently so that this world can be free. And the rest of the chapter, the rest of the section, 
is about describing the new world that God is creating, the new creation being birthed out of the old, the resurrection and the restoration of all things. And I want to end this section by reading a story from the Desert Fathers. And uh, for those of you that are watching this on video, you're going to see that I'm looking at the, the story. But hear the story from the Desert Fathers. Abba Lot went to Abba Joseph, and he said to him, I say my regular prayers. I fast a little, I pray and I meditate, and I live in peace in as much as I can. And I purify my thoughts. What else can I do? Father Joseph held up his hand and his fingers became like burning flames of a candle wick. And he said to him, if you're willing, you can become all flame. Throughout Isaiah, this imagery of the purifying fire of God, the judgment which is meant not to harm and hurt us, but to purify us and to refine the silver and to remove the dross, is an image that tells us about how God seeks to restore his world. And so is the hope and the promises of the book of Isaiah. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe.